Ho ho boardies and welcome back to Borderline Games. I'm Gareth and this is Danganronpa episode 29. Uh, last episode we began investigating for the final time, went to the second floor of the dorms and found Kyoko's dead father in a present box. And that's where we are right now and we're going to carry on. Uh, this time on Danganronpa episode 29. Okay, am I going to be able to look at this now? Oh, this picture. It's all faded. It must be pretty old. Wait, is this picture of... Hey, Kyoko. <gasps> Why would you? Well, this is annoying. I came here to cut myself free of the past. And yet... To now find something like this. So what do you expect me to do? Then I was right. It's a picture of Kyoko when she was a little girl. Knowing the headmaster had this picture all this time. He must have really cared about her. Why? Why? What? I wanted to face him and tell him myself to cut him out of my life for abandoning me. That's the whole reason I came here. And now he's abandoned me again. And this time he even stole the only opportunity I, ha I had to move on. Was there e ever was there ever been a has there ever been a worse father? Kyoko. Nice. Nice! Photo of Kyoko and Headmaster has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay, what else can I look at? The uh, drawers. This filing cabinet seems like the only place the kind of place you'd find a clue. I should take a closer look. But I don't think Kyoko would like some stranger like me touching her dad's stuff. Hey. It's fine. Check whatever you want. Are you sure? Are you sure? It, okay then. Rummage, 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 rummage. I went through each drawer one by one, starting from the top. But all I found were piles and piles of unrelated documents. He was pretty dedicated to his job, huh? Well? It's just because he didn't have anything else. He could have inherited our family business, our legacy, instead he left it all behind. Now, if... If he couldn't even handle a job like this, he would have been that much more of a failure. I'm sure he couldn't stand the thought of that, and it made him desperate. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, so we could have another look at this little box, the bones. What was in the box? It was wrapped up all nice, so I never, uh, I never would have guessed what was inside. Human bones! Okay. The headmaster's desk. It's probably hiding some kind of clue, so I really want to check it out, but... I really don't want to touch Kyoko's dad's desk without her permission. Hey. Don't worry about me. Feel free to look around as much as you like. Are you sure? Because... Never let anything get in the way of the investigation. I don't. Uh, okay, then, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. Starting from the top, I opened up, uh, I opened all the desk drawers and looked inside. I rummaged through each one, finding nothing but unrelated documents. But in the last drawer... Huh, is this? It's an e-handbook, right? But it, and it has a label on it that says, in case of emergency. I'd found some kind of emergency e-handbook in the headmaster's desk. In other words... A handbook with no limitations given to the school's ultimate authority, the headmaster. I'm assuming that's what that is. I think you're probably right. It would seem... It might prove useful as we continue our investigation. Why don't you hold on to it? Hmm. But Kyoko... I... I don't need it. If you don't want it, go ahead and leave it here. Then I guess I'll take it. Is it really okay? Nice! <laughs> Hey. Listen, Makoto. Huh? Can I ask you a favor? Don't tell the others? Is that what it is? A favor? What is it? So... I know it's completely unreasonable to ask you this. And I know it'll only, uh, it'll only inconvenience you that much more, but... Hey. Could you leave? Huh? Correct. Just for a while. I'd just like to be alone for a bit. I really got a shit in the box. 
Ki Kyoko. Don't worry, I'm fine. I just need to calm down a little. And I can't do it with other people watching. Just a I second. need to get my emotions in order. You know, Kyoko. You told me before about the relationship. Uh, you told me before about the relationship you had with your dad. How you're only connected by blood, not by heart and soul. But maybe that picture motivated him. Maybe he hoped to see me again someday. Is that what you were going to say? If so, it's just a theory. And this isn't a uh, this isn't an issue that can be settled with theories. That picture doesn't change the facts of what happened, what I went through. I... That problem can't be solved so easily. You're right. I'm sorry. Anyway... Once I've got myself under control, I'll return to the investigation immediately. So please just give me some time to myself. Okay, I understand. Then I'll see you later. Out we go. I wonder whether I can use that card. Is she really okay? Kyoko, it must have been a complete shock to her. I mean, it was a shock to me. Bones. To find out what happened to the headmaster. There's no doubt the mastermind performed that evil deed. They killed the headmaster, killed Kyoko's father. They killed him. The headmaster is dead. The one leading the Hope, uh, the Hope's Peak staff, the one you who finalized the plan to isolate you, was the Hope's Peak headmaster. So that same person may very well be the mastermind who planned all this out. And according to the files, the headmaster is a man in his late thirties. It seems possible, even likely, that he's somewhere in this school right now. I feel like I've read that out like ten times by now. But we were wrong about that. The headmaster wasn't the mastermind, which means the mastermind's true identity is. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very polarizing approach, I know, but okay, enough puns. Anyway, here's a hint. I've already read this out. Let's just go. One of the students. We you know. Fifteen of us met in the main hall. Add Makuro to the mix and you get sixteen. And including me, only six of us are still alive. Everyone else is dead. Boom. Dead. 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 Even Makoro. Dead. Even she's undeniably dead. So the ones left alive are... Me. Ryakia. Hero. Toko. Ina. Kyoko. Only those six people are still alive. Then there's no question. Wait, no, that can't be. I refuse to believe it. There has to be some other way. It just has to be. Uh, what else have we got here? Drinks. Oh no, a leather chair. I can't imagine a student using something like this. It must have been the headmaster's. Uh, desk is home to a computer. It must have belonged to the headmaster. Nice. Uh, I guess that's all we can do in this room. Yeah. We're gonna see if those um, lockers can be opened. Wait, but what about the emergency handbook I found in the headmaster's hidden room? Okay, let's give it one more try. Come on then. I took the emergency handbook and ran that across the card reader and... Beep. Alright, just what I was hoping for. Now let's see what we've got inside. This thing is uh, practically empty. There's just one thing, some kind of pocketbook. I don't see a name written on it, so I can't say for sure whose it is. But there's some writing inside, it could be important. I don't like violating the owner's privacy, but I'd better take a look. 
It looks like a girl's handwriting. And all, all the letters are spaced out evenly, like whoever wrote them uh, was measuring them. Whoever wrote this uh, must have been uh, really uh, meticulous. Huh? I was flipping through the pocketbook, my, but my hand froze when I got to a certain page. I saw something familiar written there. Words I'd heard before. <gasps> There's a plan to turn Hope's Peak into a shelter and isolate the students here in a communal life. I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. He was willing to give me some more details regarding the plan. Here's what he said. The point is to keep our student prod uh, prodigies safe, to keep them as our hope for the future. Only their genius, the genius can overcome disaster, and only their hope can overcome despair. For the future of our country, our world, it's not an, an exaggeration to call this our final hope. We must isolate our superior youth from the corrupted world to serve as the foundation for a new era. This is the only hope we have. I hope that you'll be willing to go along with this plan. So, that's what my father had to say to me. As usual, he made a selfish decision without consulting anyone else. I can't imagine a worse father. This can't be true, can it? But I knew it was, and I knew exactly who the pocketbook belonged to. Kyoko. It couldn't be anyone else. But if this belonged uh, to Kyoko, what was it doing in this locker? And what she wrote here completely contradicts what she already told me. She said she hasn't seen her dad since he left when he when she was little. <laughs> oh my god! I decided to talk to the one who came up with the plan directly. It just so happens to be the headmaster and my father. What does this all mean? I quickly scanned the remaining pages of the notebook. I must have been looking for something uh, that would prove me wrong about this whole thing. But when I reached the last page, the question marks spinning through my mind just started spinning that much faster. When I looked at it, unlike the rest of the pocketbook, the writing here was messy, disorganized, scrawled. Despair walks among us and so we survive. There's a second despair. What is this? What does it mean? I have no idea. How could this possibly make any sense? Noise. <laughs> okay. What about if I look at it? I took the emergency handbook and ran across the uh, card reader and... Beep! I don't see anything that might be a clue. Uh, okay, so... Is that the one I did? Beep! Looks like the locker opened. Nope. And these ones aren't going to open. Looks like this lock is already broken. This one? Okay. Uh, are these already broken? Uh, okay. This one. I took the emergency handbook and ran... Uh, okay, let's just zip through these. No. This one? Oh! <gasps> this locker is totally disorganized. Whoever it belongs to probably has organization problems in every part of their life. Hmm, okay. Oh, hero! This is crystal ball. Hmm, a crystal ball. No, it can't be. There's no way he ever used this locker. It's just not possible. Is this a deck of playing cards? No, they're tarot cards. But wait, aren't those used for telling fortunes? It's just a coincidence, right? There's all kinds of textbooks and notebooks stacked up in no particular order. And dust everywhere. I have to assume whoever stuff this is I didn't do a lot of studying. Not that I can really talk. I'm trying to act as casual and natural as possible. I picked up one of the notebooks I saw. But the moment I looked inside the notebook, any sense of easiness I may have had evaporated. <gasps> yes, a hero. What? There was no denying what I saw. Inside the notebook was written Yasuhiro Hagakuri. Is this our Yasuhiro? 
The notebook also contained a large number of notes for a variety of uh, different classes, which would mean he attended classes here. No, that can't be possible. I mean, Hero came to this school at the same time as the rest of us, and we were all sucked into this evil world. We never had the chance to take any classes. So what is this notebook? Nice. Okay. Uh, I've looked at everything there. And I could, oh, but the more I see, the less it makes sense. Because of these lockers, I mean, they had to belong to the previous students, right? So why am I seeing this? Why are these things in the lockers that look like they belong to people here? A notebook that seems to belong to Hero, and a pocketbook that seems like it belonged to Kyoko. There has to be some kind of explanation. But if I want to find that out, I have to keep moving and uh, I have to keep moving the investigation forward. And I have to believe in everyone. Should we go back to Kyoko? Am I going to be able to go in here? There's all kinds of stuff I want to talk to her about, but I better give her some more time. She might be the murderer, Makoto. So now we need to go to, yeah, okay. we need to go to the fourth floor. Beta room. This monokuma ring room at the back. Hey Makoto. Ah, Makoto, are you here to look around too? Is that what you're doing here? Yeah, I can't help but wonder about that Monokumo door. Yeah. So I figured, if all the doors in the school have been unlocked, that one should be open too, right? But... Although I couldn't bring myself to open it. Because it might explode. That would really suck, so you open it. Nice one, Hina. I'm sure she didn't mean it, but that, uh, she made it sound like she was okay with me getting blown up. Okay, so I guess I'll open it. Ah, ah wait, let me take cover first. I don't want to get exploded. Hina raced over to a nearby desk and hid underneath it. Okay, go ahead. Everything will be okay, right? All right, here goes nothing. I threw all, uh, my weight into it, but the door uh, opened much easier than I expected. Ooh. <gasps> you pilot it? There was no explosion, thankfully. My first impression was... Whoa, this place is totally sci-fi. Yeah, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Hmm. 4186. 8253. So, what is that? There's some kind of hatch on the floor. But right now, I'm more concerned about that weird device. Okay, we'll look at that in a sec then. What is this device? It looks like some kind of control panel. It's really over the top, though, like some kind of military installation or something. Mm. Yeah, it kind of looks like a mech cockpit, right? Cockpit, right? If we would probably freak out if he saw it. Cockpit. So the Monokuma room has a control panel that looks like some kind of cockpit. Then could that mean... Okay. All right, let's start poking it or whatever. I'm going to start pushing buttons. Hold on, you can't just all whatever something like this. But it was too late. Hina was already jabbing away at the control panel. Huh? Huh, did you hear that? Yeah, I think it came from the other room. Hina, what did you push? <laughs> uh, I'm not totally sure, but I think it was that one. The button that says data center. Data center? I took a good look at the control panel. And I saw a bunch of buttons, each with the name of a room next to it. And just like uh, Hina said, there was one labelled data centre. That must be the one she pushed. But the data centre? That's right, next door. The room we were just in. That's where the strange noise come from. 
I probably better go check it out. Yeah. Yes, please. I'm kind of scared out my mind right now, so I'll just cheer you on from over here. <laughs> okay. Monokuma, where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? Did I just hear what I think I heard? Is that Monokuma? Hello. Hey. <laughs> oh, give me all your donuts. Is that you, Hina? What? Ah, oh, man, busted. How did you know? Say what? Anyway, what is this? Some kind of remote control camera uh, kind of setup. You don't even know what you're controlling. Hello. Well, I mean, I can't really see anything from in here. Found it. Ah, guess what I found? A self-destruct button. Whatever you do, don't push it. Too bad. Oh, man. Are you seriously going to push it? Uh, anyway, I guess that settles it. The room with the Monokuma drawing on it and the control panel inside. Okay. Ah. Whoa! Hey, Makoto, what the heck was that just now? Monokuma. Huh? Huh. What do you mean? What you were controlling just now, it was Monokuma. Huh? Monokuma? What? For real? Yeah, it looks like the panel definitely controls Monokuma, which means the Mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. Yeah, they were definitely in here. The Mastermind has been controlling Monokuma from this room. And this control room is totally separate from the data center area with all the monitors. In other words... Hey. Maybe the Mastermind can't monitor us and control Monokuma at the same time. Ah. Yoko's theory was right. But... But if the Mastermind's been controlling Monokuma from here, that means they've been inside the school this whole time, right? I guess that would have to be true. But if that is true... <laughs> yeah. Here we go. The 11th time I've said this. Uh, take a single step into Hope's Peak Academy since the film game began. And there's 16 students. Yeah, so that means it has to be a student. Then the Mastermind Monokuma... The Mastermind Monokuma's puppeteer really is the 16th student. No, it can't be. There's no way, right? Nice. Monokuma, uh, Monokuma control room has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Um... What's wrong, Makoto? I don't like that face you're making. Oh, no, it's nothing. Uh, oh, okay. What about you? Is everything okay? I'm... Oh, well, it's just... This is where the Mastermind's been hiding, right? Who knows if they set up traps or something? Can't say it isn't possible, but I really hope it's not true. So, like, yeah. going to leave soon. There's still uh, lots of other places to check out. Yeah, good point. We can't waste our, all our time standing around here. Okay, you want to get going? Y yeah. I'll look at this first. Um... What's wrong, Makoto? Let's hurry up and get out of here. I want to look in there, though. You're being suspicious, Ina. Click. As soon as the door to the data center was closed, I heard a strange sound. What was that? Ah, the door had just locked on its own. What? My hand shot out to grab the doorknob. Rattle, rattle. You're right, it's locked, but why? <laughs> of course it's locked, because the data center is now restricted. But Monokuma. Just a second. Hey, no fair. You can't just go around restricting whatever you feel like. Hey, um... It's for your benefit. Because if that room stays open, I won't be able to move around. <laughs> Imagine how depressed everyone would get if the school mascot just up and stopped moving. Then, that room. Yeah. As you may have guessed, that's where my controls are. Um... So, right now you're being operated by someone in that room. Yes, indeed. Correct, Amundo. <clears throat> That doesn't make any sense. We were just in there and we didn't see anyone. <laughs> oh, you didn't, did you? <laughs> Are you sure you were as thorough as you could have been? 
Yeah, there was the... Did you happen to check a certain suspicious hatch? <laughs> no way. The hatch on the floor. <laughs> Too bad. That was your one big chance and you blew it. Too bad. Of course, that hatch can't be open from the outside anyway. So, whatever. Hmm. Now then, this room is officially restricted. So, no more investigating. I'll be relying on you guys to tell the others. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. Um. <laughs> He's gone, but... Was he telling the truth? The mastermind was hiding in there. In fact, if you think back to when we, we got locked out the, of the control room, that proves it for sure. Huh? Then, when I said we should leave... Well, that hatch couldn't be open from the outside anyway, right? So it's not your fault. Sorry. Uh, okay. Anyway, we don't have time to... Uh, we don't have to let it get to us. We have to stay positive and make the most of the time we have left. You're right. If there's one thing I'm good at... It's keeping my, uh, keeping my body moving. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go run around and tell everyone what we found here. Nice. You've got me all motivated again. You got it. Okay. I'm out. See you later. Hina took off at full sprint. And I have to do what I can do. No, I have to do what I can too. That's the only way forward. All right. Let's see if we can get in this headmaster's room. Headmaster. Yakia. This is the headmaster's room. I've heard an awful lot about it, but this will be my first time seeing it for myself. <laughs> ah, Makoto, it's you. Oh, Yakia. Okay, what have we got here? Papers on the floor. There are documents scattered all over the floor. Somehow it makes me feel anxious. I've got something behind Yakia. The bookshelf seems really well made and it's filled with files and thick books. Uh, okay. There are trophies and even a shield in a display case. What else? We not look I guess we can put the camera in the monitor. Even in the headmaster's room, this is, there's a, a surveillance camera. And even in the headmaster's room, there's a monitor. Okay. Come on. Hey, Makoto. Not possible. Are you ignoring me? You think I'll forgive that just because you're you? Such big Let me get out of here. Remember this moment. Okay, sorry, Yakia. <laughs> well, you came to the right place this time. Would you like to see something interesting? What do you mean, something interesting? <laughs> Take a look at this. It was on top of that pathetically ostentatious desk. Class number 78 student registry. <clears throat> it contains profiles for all of us. And Makuro. So in other words... Apparently class number 78 refers to us. Wait. When we found Makuro's profile in Kyoko's room. I see. That's right. It also mentioned class number 78. This must be where Kyoko got that page. And since the rest of our profiles are listed in there... Along with hers. In other words... There can be no doubt, Makuro was a student here at Hope Speak Academy, just like the rest of us. Makuro Ikasaba. The 16th student. That must be how Kyoko learned about it. <laughs> but it seems that Kyoko was in a hurry. Huh? What do you mean? <laughs> I'm talking about when she stole it. The uneven tearing. The way the paper had been crumpled. She must have been in a hurry. Well, since she snuck in to get it, I'm sure she wanted to get out as fast as possible. But what's your point? <laughs> she was in so much of a hurry that she only got the first page. The first page. <laughs> Correct. Makuro's profile actually contains two pages. What? So, in other words... In other words, when it comes to this profile, there was more information about Makuro than we, uh, that we still didn't have. Oh yeah, I'm all ears. What kind of information is it? Why do you ask me to explain every little thing? You can read, can't you? It seems to be some sort of detailed report put together by the headmaster himself. 
I don't know what kind of man he was, but I'm glad he left us such an interesting clue. I was half listening to Byakuya as I skimmed through the report. Makura reappeared suddenly, and in the background, an, an entry, no, an entity floats close, but just out of reach. Hmm. That's her. The entity known as the Ultimate Despair. Right now, I can't be sure if this is a single person or some kind of group. Whatever it is, Makura definitely has some sort of connection to it. I have a bad feeling about all this. I need to push forward with my research into the ultimate despair. I need to pay attention to Makura's behaviour too. This is just my gut feeling, but I think she's dangerous. Despite the countless battles she must have gone through as a member of Fenra, when she entered Hope's Peak, she didn't display any sign of battle wounds or scars. Interesting. That fact alone proves her tremendous skill in battle. Naturally, I want to believe in her. She's one of my students, after all. But if I decide she's a danger to other students, I will be forced to take all responsible me uh, take all responsible measures. Makoro was a part of the ultimate despair. I don't think there can be any doubt about it now. But wouldn't that mean Makoro and the Mastermind were allies? So why? Why would they kill Makoro? Plus, even the headmaster seemed to be afraid of what Makoro was capable of. It would have had to take the take her completely by surprise to kill her like that. Or maybe it means the mastermind is even stronger than Makoro was. What? What's wrong, Makoto? Huh? That's fine. You seem to be lost in thought, but I should probably point out one other one other thing. There's another important bit of uh, there's another important bit of information within the file that you should uh, that you should note. What is it? Did you notice the picture in there? A picture of a girl perhaps you've never seen before. <laughs> A girl who seems to be included in part of our class, number 78. That should be enough for you to figure out who the girl is. Hmm. And further information about the girl is inclu included in the file. 5 foot 7 inches, 97 pounds, and it even lists her vitals, 31, 22, 32. <laughs> well, what do you think? What do I think? Are you asking me, like, if she has a nice body? You hopeless idiot. What I'm trying to tell you is maybe you'll want to keep that in mind for later. Maybe you'll make your way back to the corpse and maybe you'll think, oh, could that mean? Wait, is he trying to say... There's a chance the body isn't actually Makoro. Is that what he's saying? Personally, what I'm uh, thinking seems all, all but possible, but it wouldn't hurt to confirm, right? It's all clear now. That's all I was trying to say. What you do with that information is your business. So I'm back to being Byaku, uh, Byakuya's errand boy. Makura's profile has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Okay. Hmm. Oh, and one last thing. It's a bit of a, uh, uh, it's a bit of advice for me to you, so I suggest you pay attention. Advice for me. You seem to be getting along with Kyoko quite well. It's not that we're getting along. She's just done a lot to help me. Hmm. Well, don't put too much faith in her. Huh? In other words, the cost of that faith might be more than you can afford. What are you trying to say? <laughs> just what I think. Call it a hunch. A hunch. But my hunches tend to be proven right. The advice is free this time. Take it or don't. As you will. I'll keep it in mind, thanks. Okay. Let's leave the area. Yes. Uh, oh. I need to go upstairs. There's a room up here that we didn't have access to. And it is not the garden room, but the bio lab, is that what it is? This one? Who's in here? Hero? Oh. Well, here I am in the bio lab. It's so cold. It's like abnormally cold. I feel like I'm in a giant refrigerator. Seriously, why is it so cold? It's preserving all the bodies. 
first of all, let's have a look at this table. Ugh, so cold. Why is it so cold in here? That's the first thing I need to figure out. Oh, okay. There's some kind of weird machine or something built into the wall. And on the left side, there's a bunch of glowing blue lights. But on the other side... Uh... Right, there's the ones that remain. There's some kind of weird machine or something built into the wall. I've seen something like this before. Oh, that's it. I've seen this kind of thing in horror movies and stuff. It's a fridge for storing dead bodies. Does that mean this biolab is actually a morgue? I should probably take a closer look around. Okay. Yes. Oh, there's some kind of booklet here. It looks like an instruction manual. We offer an eco-friendly alternative to standing dry ice for all your cadaver needs. In addition to the germicidal lamps, we also provide the ozone generator for the removal of ethylene gas. Simply insert the cadaver and the blue light will let you know the automated systems have been activated. Temperature and humidity levels will be adjusted automatically for optimum settings. With our system, anyone can keep a body fresh as a daisy for as long as you need. In the unlikely event of a problem, the red light will activate and an alarm will sound immediately. The exterior is stainless steel and we do offer an, uh, an optional lever upholstery upgrade package. This is the instructional manual for the fridge. Okay. Tarps. Right. Okay, I see what's going on here. There's a stack of tarps here. I've been seeing a lot of those things lately. Uh, okay. There are icicles hanging from the monitor. I'm surprised the, uh, the surveillance camera can work with how cold it is in here. So, I guess look at this again. It's some kind of weird machine. Yeah. The right hand lights are off. Well, looking around, I think I get it. It seems clear to me now. It was a makeshift morgue. Nice. Biolab secret has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Now out those lights by each slot. It looks like it's set up so that when a slot is occupied, the blue light comes on. Which would mean inside each slot uh, lit up in, in blue, another one of the victims is... Nice. Biolab lights have been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Hmm. I can't let my emotions take control right now. There's only one thing I can do for everyone who's died, and that's defeat the mastermind. And to do that, I have to continue my investigation. I don't have any other option. But if I look at this one, I can see that there is seven as opposed to six. Okay. Uh, can I leave now? So now... Uh, garden, where is that? Is that this here? The body there? Hmm. Huh? It's gone. Makuro's body. It's not here. Okay. Still just four chickens left. Honestly, I'd be kind of terrified if there were more than that. What about... In here? Maybe the body's inside the tool shed. Better check just to be sure. Just, just to be sure. Ah, to be sure. I didn't find anything even close to a dead body. But if it's not in here either, then it must be... Could it be in the biolab? But corpses aren't the only thing I need to check in there. In here, there's one other thing. That tarp. The tarp played a key role in, in another case, so I better look into it. The killer used the tarp to keep the sprinklers from getting the body body wet, which means the killer might have a, have left some clue behind here. Okay. Huh? I didn't notice this before, but there's a small stamp in one corner of the tarp. It says Biolab. And this originally came from the Biolab. Tarp has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. Uh, nothing else I need to check in here, is there? I don't think so. Is 
so can I go back? That's all I really need to check in here. Okay. Let's go back to the bio lab. See if there's anything else. I might uh, say check all the bodies now to see which one is the right height. Which must suck for Makoto. Maybe it's not going to do that. Um. Yeah, we did all that. Uh, okay. We've done that. Alright, okay. One step close to the edge. And I'm about to break. Let's do a door uh, take in here. Nothing new in there. An eye for an eye. Oh. Alright, okay. We'll leave it there for this time. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a good evening. And I'll see you next time on Borderline Games. Where we hopefully start the last uh, class trial. Uh, we have... Ooh. Anything else in here? Oh, hello, Toko. Let's just quickly speak to Toko. Oh, Toko, so this is where you were. What do you want? What do you want? Am I so dis disgusting you want me out of your sight? No, that's not it at all. I just thought maybe you'd found a clue. Well, I haven't. I didn't find anything, not a single clue. I figured since this place was related to the case, it must have had something. It, must, uh, it would have to have something, right? But there wasn't anything out of the ordinary here. Give it back. Give me back my precious time. Calm down, Toko. What's your problem? Don't tell me to calm down. Do you have any idea what I'm going to, uh, what I'm going through right now? When everyone finds out, they're going to call me useless. Good for nothing. Nobody's going to say that. Master will. I'm not sure I can disagree with that. I don't want that. I'm sick of always being looked down on. Why won't anyone accept me? Um, well... I don't think there are any clues here, so maybe I'm just going to get going. Yeah. Okay, so that was a dead end. Um, <clears throat> so, as you were, Gareth, um, we'll see you next time on Borderline Games where we crack the final part of this investigation and start the final uh, Clash Trial. See you guys later. Bye-bye. Have a good evening. See you later. Bye.